So in this video, we just go through um, putting uh, fiberglass uh, muffler insulator around the silencers. Um, I thought it was going to be a really easy job, but it turned out, turned out to be really fiddly. <laughs> um, you'll see later on the, the fiberglass I bought, I think is too thick. It can't, it's really difficult to squeeze it into the the neck of the uh, silencer uh, and it just frays really easily into thousands of fibers and I couldn't get it to, to really sit in there properly. So I basically measure out the, the size of the fiberglass I want. Um, it's pretty easy to cut and just use a pair of scissors and um, a um, marker pen just to outline the the shape you want. Here you can see I start to try and squeeze in the edge into that sort of locating ring because um, it's got to sit below the line of that tube. So I assume the, the original fiberglass was the way it was wound around the that pipe was it had to insert itself into that end of the tube um, but you can see i've got too much there and um, i'll need to trim that back it's at this point um i sort of got it roughly in position and then just used a small um, flat bladed screwdriver just to try and work the edge of the fiberglass into that recessed um, it's yeah like I say it's proven really difficult it just um, breaks down like candy floss it's so very um, fibrous so second attempt the first one I couldn't get it to work at all so a new piece of fiberglass also I'm wearing gloves now <laughs> because this stuff is um, obviously fiberglass and uh, it can irritate your hands and, um, and your throat. So be careful with the, with this stuff, it's, it's not great. Yeah, so wear a mask as well, um, so you don't inhale it because it can be very um, irritable and uh, make you cough a lot. So now I'm trying to wrap or hold the fiberglass in place with uh, copper wire. Um, I use copper as opposed to steel wire because in the past, I've, when I have used steel wire, it, uh, it tends to corrode quite quickly and, and fall apart. So I'm hoping that the copper wire um, will last a bit longer. I mean, it doesn't have to be strong, just enough to sort of hold it in position. And in fact, this copper wire is, uh, I just pulled it out of an old short length of electrical cable. I uh, didn't need any more, so... Um, yeah, it's a, like I say, it's an experiment to see how it, it lasts long term. But yeah, it's, it's not good. Um, it's a real battle. And um, in the end, I sort of have to give up and start again for a third attempt. So this time, the third attempt, I decided to get some masking tape and just go around the edges of the, the square section of fiberglass just to sort of hold the, the edge of the fibers together when I'm like trying to wedge it inside that tube. Um, fi uh, masking tape obviously has no real value once we get it in, into the bike because uh, it's made of paper, it will just disintegrate. You don't want to use like plastic tape or something like that because that will just stink and, and melt and make a right mess. So if anything, this, this masking tape will just like I say, get cooked in there and, and dry out and disintegrate, but the copper wire will, will hold the rest of the fiberglass in place, hopefully. Uh, we might pull this apart maybe in 12 months time and have a look to see how well it's coped. But if anybody knows of a better way to pack um, this fiberglass, uh, yeah, put, put the comments in there because it was a real struggle to get this to, to sort of stay together. Maybe the fiberglass is just too thick and I need to use a thinner, yeah, thinner sheet of fiberglass. 
Um, I'll find out what thickness that is. I've got a feeling it's like five mil. Just making up, <clears throat> just making the gaskets. I'll go in underneath, underneath here. Just out of um, vulcanized cork and rubber, and I'll just sit under there and just compress flat. So I'll press in there, and just to make things a bit easier. I just using a like a punch and the press to to push out the or cut the inner ring. And then I'll just I could use another <laughs> cut another ring, but I'll just use a pair of scissors. So it's pretty good. These are just gasket off eBay. Cheap. I looked up the genuine parts online. Um and this is what they look like. So it's just a, like a foam ring almost, nothing special. So I think they'll do. So this is my uh, tire changer. Uh, it's just a cheap one I got off. Uh, actually a, a bicycle, online bicycle um, shop. They were selling these discount. I mean, it's, it's, it's not perfect, but it does a job of used it on a lot of bikes now mainly big capacity bikes like like ABM 1290 uh, so I've customized it a bit because um, the different size wheels especially on the KDM the front and the rear the height difference or the width of the tire is quite different so I've sort of modified this I've added this so this can go up and down um, I'll put a lot more padding on around the edges to support support the wheel more so um, so you don't chip it as much and also with the I just found out with the RZ um, the bolt that normally in the middle is too big to go through the middle of the wheel so I've just had to put in some thread 12 mil threaded rod that seems to do the job so I can just change between the two. I tend to screw it to the floor because um, especially when you put the tires on you don't want this moving around so it helps just to screw it into this wooden floor. So the idea is we pop that on over the top. Try not to hit our head. Uh, put that on. It doesn't need to be too tight. It's not going anywhere. It's just to stop it maybe tipping up. But so it's only finger tight. And then you fiddle around with this to get the right angle. Uh, you want to get down as low as you can, close to the rim without chipping it. Obviously, it doesn't matter for us because this is all going to be paint come off. But if you had a good rim here, you don't want it to be slipping into that so just try and get it to bite obviously we've taken the air out just get it to bite and then hopefully that will just crack the um, seal he says there it goes just spin that around and work Work our way around. And then, just to be doubly certain, we'll flip it over. And just do the other side. So 
So that's that. Um, I'll just put it the other way, it just makes it a bit easier. That we don't damage anything. Normally you'll have the disc brakes on this. There comes the pun part. Let's get this off. I must get some better tar levers. Um, there's some which are quite long. And have a big handle at the end. These are, I think, these are too small, so I should buy them. Well, I've used them a while. You can see I put tape on the on the ends to try and save the paintwork a bit. Um, and you can buy them on eBay. They come with these things, which are quite handy. They just protect the rim a bit. Again, don't have to bother in our case, but just so you get the idea. We'll put a couple of these on. Like that. And then try our best to get this off. So one's just like that, she's good. I mean, I could have put a, I could have put a, yeah, I could have put a bit of soap on. That would make things a bit easier. This is like proper um, tar soap, but fair liquid or washing up liquid will do. And you can just whack a bit in there. Don't need much. Um, yeah, so there's a bit of, I think it's more technique than anything. Practice the more you do it. I remember the first time I did it, it took forever. And then the second time, now on the K KDM, I can do it in about. Uh, 10 minutes. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize, but uh, we'll find out later. This, this tire actually has an inner tube in it. Um, and I think inner tubes the inner tube was still retaining a lot of air um, normally when you crack the seal the tire becomes uh, quite loose on the rim but it was still holding its shape so I let I let more I squashed the tire flat and it let more air out I should have just removed the valve um, but I didn't realize like I say until later on that this tire has an inner tube in it and it just made things a bit harder
It's at this point um, I realize later I should follow my own instructions and that is put soap on. Um, I'm removing this tar without actually putting any soap on it. It's uh, I don't know why I didn't think not to put it on earlier but there you go. Put a bit of soap on. Yeah, <laughs> that's always put a bit of soap on, it pops out. How old is our tyre? Um, well, if you look at the side of any tyre, there's a code after DOT, Department of Transport, uh, usually followed by some letters, and then either three digit number or four digit numbers. Um, if it's a three-digit number, it means it's been made before the year 2000 because they changed the way the coding worked. So in our case, we've got 362. So the first two letters, uh, first two numbers are the, the 36th week of that year. And two, you need to sort of substitute the number before it or guess. Um, it could have been uh, 1972, 1982 or 1992 now given the age of our bike it's probably uh, 1992 this was made so it's a pretty old tire and I'm glad we're getting rid of it but to make things a bit clearer they then switched to a four digit code and in the case of uh, my KTM I've got an old tire and we've got the number 3214 so using this uh, new code is a lot easier to understand it's simply the 32nd week of 2014. So thanks for watching and um, we'll catch up next time.